So my goal here is to get the 1JZ and the uh, CD Trans made it up and get that into the S13. And I got to get a hood and put that motor transmission in that car, put a hood on it. So when I close the shop up, this motor is in the car or this motor and this transmission are in the S13 and out of the weather and they're together and in the car. So um, I've got to get on the ball and get all that I can get done between now and then. So anyway, moving on. So on the CD009 transmissions, you can see here, there's these ribs on the side of it. So what has to happen, you have to cut this bell housing off because we're doing the CD to a 2JZ transmission conversion. So you'll go to this, so you, know, you got the rib right here at the neck of it. Then you come back to the first line here, and then this second line, this is actually where you're gonna cut. So if you can kind of see in here, back that way, the back of it ends up being about the front of this line. So we're gonna cut the front of this line all the way around and cut this bell housing off of this transmission. So I've gotta get my side grinder, get it ready, and yeah, this transmission's heavy. It's a lot heavier than the um, AR5, I think, if I feel like it is. So we'll get this cut off and disassembled, and we'll go to, you put a J2 bell housing on from the automatic, like the GS300, IS300, SC300, it's the J2 bell housing actually goes back on this. So we gotta cut this deal off. So let me gather everything up and we'll get to that. All right, here we go. All right, so got the grinder. I don't have the thinnest cutoff wheel. It's the one that I found. But So we'll stay on this side of, so like this lip here, this one will stay on that side of that lip and follow that edge all the way down. So that's what we'll work on. Here we go. position this thing so it don't fall over on me. All right, hold on. I'm just gonna keep cutting on it and um, I've got it kind of stationary, but I'm gonna cut all I can with it this way and then I'll flip it over and cut the other side once I get all I can from this angle. So keep on cutting. phone jumped off the stand. All right, hold on. All right, I've done all the cutting again on that side for a minute. I'm gonna cut on this side. And once I get the whole 
both sides and the top cut, I'll flip the transmission over, reposition it, and then I'll cut the bottom half. But I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and cut all I can while I'm on this position. <laughs> be perfect it just has to be far enough back to when you mount the new piece that it doesn't hit anything here so I may have to grind a little more but it's just going to be to make that clear um, I may have to grind some high spots down for it to set and it so looking at it on the side once I made up my bell housing to the transmission you may see a gap here and you may see some waves between it that's not gonna matter. That needs to bolt tight. So you may have a gap here, that's okay. That's not what's holding it. It's bolted to the face where this actual piece is. So 
your new replacement piece will be bolted here, not around the neck of this. So if you're a little off on this, it's okay. It's, that's not what's holding it. The bell housing isn't what's holding, or the transmission's not holding to the bell housing. It's gonna be the bolts that go into the bearing retainer that hold that bell housing on, on the, when we swap it over. And then when we put that piece on, then the J2 bell housing will bolt to this piece. It doesn't bolt back here. It bolts to the piece we add in, which bolts directly to the bearing retainer. But we'll get to that part. Um, may not be today, but we got our brand new CD009 transmission bell housing is officially cut off. So, $2,000 transmission and I start cutting on it. It's kind of a weird feeling. But, we're at least to that point. All right, so here we go. We're back on it. We cleaned it off a little bit. We got some dust off. And all I got is a 12 millimeter socket with an impact. We'll take the factory, I guess you'd call it a bearing retainer. Bearing retainer plate, maybe. Take this dual off. And these are Loctited, and you're gonna get some oil out of the bottom ones. That's pretty much standard on the bottom ones, you'll always. So when you go back in, these bottom four, you wanna put some RTV on them, or something, some type of Loctite, because these dudes will leak on the bottom. Let me make sure I got something to drain it into. Let's pull them jewels out. That's pretty standard for these bottom ones to leak. Just about any transmission, if they've got any lower bolts, you can plan on them leaking. If they may have been full, I don't really know. We'll let that drain for a minute, and then once it gets drained, we'll pull that cover off. All right, so we've got that pretty much drained. I'm gonna take me some kind of something to pry with. Just kinda work this thing off. It actually come off pretty easy. Take the cover off. Set it to the side, because we're no longer gonna need this thing. And it's new, so you could actually maybe put it on the Facebook Marketplace and sell it. Something of that nature. Um, you'll find there's some Loctite still in these holes here. I want to clean those up a little bit. So what has to happen now? Now we have our adapter. It's got a new seal. I'm gonna put this seal in here and then we'll get ready to set it up there and get it ready to, to mate up. So let me get this in. And what we're gonna do right now is actually test fit to make sure I have this cut down enough for this to sit on it. So let me uh, change this seal or add this seal in. It actually goes right there. So I'll be pushing this seal in, then I'll come back with it. All right. So, what we're working with now is this jewel. So, I put my seal in. Now, this guy goes right there. Here's, we're not hitting anything. There we go. 
Now we got these bolts, they go in the recess holes here. So we're gonna put some Loctite on. And I always put, I always put uh, all my bolts in first. before I tighten them. style throttle bearing and then you take the J2 bell housing and put it on pretty much the auto sports engineering adapter um, but the way this one's set up you run their flywheel and then you buy just a standard 350z clutch kit so you buy this this adapter, you have an option to buy a T56 throttle bearing. Uh, and then if you're going to like an S chassis, you have to replace the shifter. I've got the shifter and everything too. I got ARP bolts for this jewel. I've got a brand new clutch kit for uh, this swap to the 1J. But yeah, that's pretty much setting this thing up and yeah, the next piece is this goes to the motor obviously you know the back to the motor put your clutch kit on 350z clutch and pressure plate uh, put the bow housing on well you bolt this down get it tight first and put the bow housing on um, and then you put it in the car yeah your supply line for your uh, oil come hydraulic fluid coming from your clutch goes in this line and that's your bleeder valve all right so i've got it all together you can see you know how the gapping is right there that's what i was saying you just gotta it ain't gotta look perfect it's just gotta be off of where this thing will sit you can see the gapping there a little tight right here but it's not touching um and you just tighten that thing down and these will be like a pan head bolt on those so they'll recess down in here so um, now when you put your t56 piece on i bet you got a bolt there and a bolt there and it comes in the kit including the bell housing bolts all that comes in the kit from autosport engineering if i had to do it over again i would have added in the line and I probably would have got the um, extended bleeder because that's just going to be right against your, you know, your inside your trans tunnel. So that needs to be able to come out and go somewhere else. So I'll probably go ahead and order that bleeder and that, or that line and then this line before I 
finish this piece up because I think I have to take this off and actually add that line in here maybe. It may go to this, but I think it actually hooks in here. So I'm gonna see about ordering that line and the supply line as well. That, that dude's on. So it's one last thing and we have another CD009 over there we're gonna eventually have to do. So I'll end up having to do this kit again at some point. But the 1J, I've got to change the rear seal on it and it'll be ready, finish doing this and then put the flywheel on that. I got ARP flywheel pressure plate bolts and I'll get that on and then we'll be ready to go in the S13. So once we get the drive shaft, it should be here tomorrow. So I may not be at the shop tomorrow. I may have to wait because there's something I got signed for. I don't know if it's a drive shaft or not, but there's something in the mail I've got to sign for. But this thing, it's supposed to be here tomorrow, the drive shaft for this. So I'm gonna hang out tomorrow, get that drive shaft, get that landed, get it here so I can get this out and get the 13 in and probably go ahead and set this motor and trans in and then find me a, a um, whatchamacallit, a hood to be able to at least seal that car up for when I close the shop, you know, completely and I don't have the means to work on it like that. I can put it at my house and store it without it, it being in the weather. Um, it's all I can do, it's all I know to do right now. Cause I don't, I still gotta do the interior of the car and I'm not gonna have time to do that and get it all together, windshield in it and everything before I have to be out of here. So I'm doing what I can while I can and trying to get the shop cleaned out, cleaned up and whatever job's done that I can finish while I'm here. So that's the goal. But all right, here we go. Something else, I actually forgot that I ordered the line instead of the, the the kind that comes with it. But they sent a fitting. I had to knock that pin out and it was that same style fitting, but it was threaded on the other side. So I knocked that pin out um, and put this piece in. I took this one out, put this one in and it was threaded. And so that gave me a line that goes up to be a supply line for this. And I think before going further, I'm gonna order the extended um, uh, bleeder too. Cause I think that's gonna be a problem. So I'm gonna wait to put the bell housing on until I get the extended bleeder. So I'm gonna go ahead and order that thing and make it a complete set. But yeah, so I'm on hold on this uh, outfit because I wanna go ahead, and go ahead and get the extended bleeder. I see why you need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that thing on the way. So, all right, here we go. All right, so I decided I was just gonna go ahead and I did order the extended line, the remote bleeder or whatever you wanna call it. But I think I can get to it. Even if I can't, I can pull the bell housing off. I just wanted to put it on just to see what we got. I should be able to get in there to them. But that's what you got. So the only thing left would be the remote bleeder. If you don't add that, you don't have to worry about it. The, um, yeah, seems to be a done deal. It seems to be, everything looks good. There you go. But it's on. And when the remote bleeder comes in, I'll put it on. Um, and if I have to pull the bell housing off, I will. But that'll be the only thing that's left besides the clutch and flywheel on the actual motor. This side's ready to be done. So, all right, here we go. I'm feeling high.